What's up, guys? Happy Friday evening to all of you, even you smack talkers, William and Ray. How are you guys doing this evening? Good to see you guys in here already, hanging out and uh, and talking smack, as I said. Ray, I'm going to talk again about the package that you sent me. I want to show that and uh, I want to thank you again. I know I'm slow. I haven't contacted you outside about dollar amounts, um, but want to show those axis baits up close in this stream. And like I said, I'm going to make a, a separate video showing those ones um, up close in higher quality. So again, drinking a Coors Banquet, just a standard. Coors Original. Day's been pretty good, William. Um, only left the house for like an hour today. Stopped by a pond real quick and, and caught a bass on like my uh, fourth or fifth cast. I was I was desperate to try one of these baits and uh, just see if it ran true or not and what the action was like and uh, and managed to catch a fish. So that was kind of fun. But um, but we'll talk about it. If you guys noticed already, the title of this video uh, has something to do with making your own chatterbaits, DIY chatterbaits. Guys, there's six people in here. Nobody's hit the thumbs up button yet. Hit hit that thumbs up. Do me a favor. Let's, uh, let's try and get some people in here this evening. I haven't been paying attention. I don't know if, um, if there's a bunch of other folks streaming live this evening or not, but... Um, but I'm with my girls tonight. My wife went to work, so I haven't had a chance to uh, to tune in and see Bateman or anybody else uh, who might be streaming live tonight. So how are you guys doing today? How have you been this evening? Were you guys watching any live streams? Riley, what's up? How are you doing? William, thanks for the, uh, the like. Looks like five people have hit that thumbs up. Appreciate you guys. Alex Rosenland, hey, how are you doing? Simon, thank you. All right. So I always wonder whether or not to pull this up on Instagram, but I'm going to do it right now. Just screw it. Um, I'm going to try not to to respond to people or pay attention to the platform over here um, as much. But trying to get some people crossing over between the two. You know, my growth over on Instagram slowed as I thought it might when I, uh, when I did my giveaway here over on YouTube. So no live streams that I saw other than yours, says Simon. Interesting. Yeah, William, I wish you had a beer um, and were with me as well. I would share one with you, assuming you're of age. How old are you, William? Hmm. Whatever, I'm rusty. I can't figure out how to even stream live over here. So maybe I won't do it. There we go. Don't love it. William, what did you say, bro? How old are you, man? All right, guys. So we're going to talk about how to build a chatterbait real quick. Um, just at least to satisfy the people who are maybe jumping in here on the replay and watching this to learn about the accessory that I want to show you guys. Aaron's outdoor. What up, man? How are you doing tonight? Riley says, I put four custom baits and two flicker shad baits in the package. 
Right on. Appreciate that, Riley. Thank you very much. I didn't know you actually went and uh, and sent them out. I know you said you were going to, but William, I'm 21. I don't know that I believe you, man. <laughs> I don't know that I believe you. What's up, everybody, over on Instagram? Looks like Justin just hopped in. Justin, I'm I'm over on YouTube right now, and uh, and that's where I will be for the majority of the evening. I will probably only be on Instagram for a short period of time here. But what I wanted to do was show you guys tonight on both platforms for a few minutes just how cool these Queen Tackle switchblades are. I've mentioned them before. William says, ask Riley. I'm 21. I don't know about that. We're both 16. Yeah. William, I would not share a beer with you after all. Arkabass Fisherman, howdy to you as well. Hope you're doing well. Justin, you're at the boat ramp, man? That's pretty crazy. All right, guys. Queen Tackle Switchblade. Not sure how well you can see this, but it is literally a blade accessory that you add onto a vertical line tie or a vertically oriented hook to make a chatterbait, okay? And this is really cool because you don't have to use the old school blade with a split ring and have a uh, significantly inferior quality bladed jig than uh, than say what what Z-Man puts out. Z-Man has the patent and have been so successful because they have that direct blade to head connection that nobody is allowed to copy. Now the switchblade is an accessory and it's just a blade. It's not um you know, it's not a chatter bait. It's not a, a bait itself. So pretty cool deal that you can buy these because it's a really nifty little deal where, um, let me show you up close. And I've tried showing you guys before when I first got these and it was really hard to do. But what you'll see is there's these clips You can loosen up just with a set of pliers, right? You got to pay attention to which side you do it on because on the back, you can see that the wire that comes across the front of here to secure this blade down, um, The back of it is like pinched off. So there's a better side for you to pull out and fiddle with. And so you want to loosen up one side. And the middle will literally just um, will slide down. And it moves out of the way and swings freely. And you can put it on. Like I'm going to see if it fits on this bait right here. Gonna try and rig this on video. Um, you know, I tried doing this when I first got the blades, and it was a disaster. So hopefully, it won't be right now. All right, and I want to hear it if Ryan is over here on YouTube. Don't talk about my concentration and my focus right now. I'm trying to get this right the first go around. So I just slid that right up on there. I'll have to make a separate video showing you guys in kind of a POV. So you can see just how well this attaches directly to there. Just clamped it down. That little bar just goes straight across your line tie, and then you pinch it down. So check this out. Now I have this owner flashy swimmer. This is the six aught 
size with this gold collar or gold um gold colorado blade and i think a three eighths ounce weight and i've got this with a z-man nine inch grubs rigged on there huge bait and now i can put this blade on here um, i wanted to test it out because i tried this with an a dot owner beast hook and the wire of the line tie on the swim bait hook was a little bit too thick for the blade to be able to move side to side if you can hear and see there's enough play here for the blade to go side to side so only thing you need to do now if you can see this blade is totally flat right now out of the package shoot all right my four-year-old is crying right now guys so hang tight i will be back in a couple of minutes
Sorry, guys. My bad. All right, guys. I figured y'all over on YouTube would just hang out. You don't even mind me being here. But, uh, BJ, welcome, dude. Good to see you in here. Do, do, do. I'm definitely not keeping up, but anyway. Yo, Riley, how's your shoulder doing? It's getting better. You can fish. Fair enough. Yo, Insta homies, what's up? What up, what up, what up, what up? Aunt Pam, you in here still? Looks like not. It's a wave, says I want some. It's a wave. Colin. Colin, dude, I've, I've really only been uh, streaming over on YouTube, dude. All right, Simon says, Adrian Valdez, what's up? Good to see you in here. You say, LOL, I'm from Rhode Island. Interesting. I wonder what that's like right now. Uh, what are your conditions like up in Rhode Island? How cold is the water? Assuming. Uh, your ice has melted, right? Simon says, any new bait colors or types? Any suggest? Um, there's a lot that we could talk about. But first, I want to get through this topic and show you guys just a couple of ideas that I have for this switchblade. So, Colin Williams, hey, happy fishing from Iowa. Well, right back at you, man. Appreciate it. Hope you're having a good Friday night. Ron Holly in the building. Thinking of moving to Newport, Rhode Island. What's the freshwater fishing like there? Right on. All right, guys. So, Queen Tackle Switchblade, as I talked about, I have used all three that came in this original package of. The, um, I got all regular size first. They make a regular and a large. And um, so I got all three colors, all three blades um, in the regular size. And the first is just this silver finish. And um, I put one on a double frog hook, a toad that I sent to Will Perriman. I put one on this swim jig here. This is a Strike King tour grade swim jig. It's a quarter ounce swim jig with a very um, light weed guard, medium wire hook, and then I've got a 3.8 inch uh, Kitek that I, I chopped the tail off and this is an awesome bait i've used it a number of times now and absolutely love the action and the thump that thing that this thing puts out um before i put the blade on here i had the swim bait on here and it was one of my favorite swim jig combos you know the smoky shad jig color matches up perfect with the the old black shad kitak color so once i put that blade on there though it didn't feel quite right, and I, I had a feeling it was because of that paddle tail. So once I chopped the paddle tail off, and um, and the tail was just free to move with the blade, all of a sudden the action on this thing was spectacular. So really, really like this one, especially for shallower water. I also used my third and final silver one on another swim jig. Just a another logical combo here. This is the Six Sense Divine Swim Jig in the lavender shad color, and I've paired it up with the Six Sense 
Divine swim bait. This is in the 4.4 inch though, and the I don't know what they call this color. It's like an electric shad type of deal. And um, I had the tail on there. I felt conflicted, but uh, ultimately decided to cut that off. So this guy does not have much bend, but is still going to have a very tight, good action. Going to give the bait just a little bit bigger of a profile. So I think the hookup ratio will still be stellar on this thing, even though it's got a longer, stiffer trailer and it's got a stiffer weed guard. But here's the X factor is I put the Pro Point Lures underspin blade into the bottom of the swim bait here. And so initially, before I put the blade on, this was like a homemade Mega Bass Uoze swimmer, which I'm not sure if you guys have seen that. Uh, it's a like a $15 swim jig that essentially is just a swim jig with a underspin blade attached by a wire to the shank of the hook. Just, just like you see here without the trailer though. So in this setup, you have to have the trailer on to screw the underspin blade in. But once it's in, especially with a trailer like this, that's a, a firmer plastic. It's going to stay in there. So I liked it as just an Uoze swimmer uh, without the chatterbait blade on there and with the paddle tail on the swim bait. I like that a lot. But um, but I also like this deal here. Uh, there's only one bait on the market that I know of that is really this design with a chatterbait blade and an underspin blade. And I think that's the fish head. Uh, what do they call it? The dude? The, uh, I don't even, I don't think so. I forget what it's called, but Fishhead makes one. And um, anyway, I think this is the most logical way to use the Queen Tackle Switchblade is they come three to a pack for like five, six bucks, right? So you pay like $2 a blade and you can customize, take your favorite swim jig. So six cents. Divine Swim Jig is an awesome swim jig. Very high quality paint jobs. Great hook that is like a perfect medium wire. Screw lock keeper and a firm, but not too firm, weed guard. Love that swim jig. Um, even a little bit better than I like the, the California Swim Jig by Dirty Jigs. But you take either one of those swim jigs and you have kind of a heavy cover, um, you know, thick grass type of chatterbait swim jig where you're going to rip it out. And um, then here you've got the quarter ounce and, um, and you're going to fish this on the edges and in shallower water and um, just in finessier situations and for smaller fish. And um, really like how you can, you can go in a couple different directions, right? You can really take whatever jig you want and turn it into a chatterbait. So let me answer some of these questions. Looks like Ryan just hopped in the building. Good to see you, man. I don't think I'm caught up on comments over on uh, Instagram, but who cares? Yeah, BJ, I agree. With the underspin blade on there, pretty wicked, huh? Riley says it's been 90 degrees over in Louisiana. Dang. Adrian, what did Adrian say? Oh, you guys are talking about places to fish. Okay, interesting. Up in Rhode Island. Appreciate it, BJ. Yeah, I'm going to show you the rest of these uh, that I've got built so far. So. Um, like I said, after just a standard swim jig, why not think about going with like a weedless um, swim bait hook or something like that? So I just showed you how to rig it, put it on here. And it seems that this should work just fine. So gold blade with the gold 
Colorado blade here, and that could be sweet. Like I said, you do need to bend it. So what I like to do, just about halfway between the top and the middle, is grab it and bend it. And, um, you know, I, I usually end up goofing this up more often than not, and that's okay. So once you think you have this spot, grab it hard and just bend, knowing that you're putting more pressure on one side than the other, and it just is what it is. Not that big of a deal because what we're going to be doing right after is kind of easing up on it. So you bend it harder to to make the crease and then you kind of straighten it back out mostly. And voila, there you go. So, nothing too serious um, in terms of how bent it is, but that's something that you're going to want to pay attention to um, when you start running the bait. It does affect the action greatly, um, especially if you haven't bent it very well, um, if, if you've really jacked it up. So, something to pay attention to. Um, okay, moving on, I've got three others that I've built. I'm missing one, but that's okay. Three others that I want to show you. I posted this one on Instagram today, and I'm pretty pumped about it. Um, as I said in the post, I was just super, super eager to get out on the water and see how this thing throws because this right here is the dart spin from Hyperlastics. You guys probably know this bait by now uh, just because i've talked about it a number of times this is the four and a half inch version and hyperlastics is essentially like elastic from z-man super stretchy i mean it is invincible um i think it's tougher than elastic to be honest with you and it comes in these standard colors and then also in some pro painted colors they come pre-rigged with a, a belly-weighted swim bait hook in them, and um, and both are great. But this is the the small four and a half inch size, and I like rigging it on a BMC boxer swim bait hook. This is like an Alabama rig style head, very small head, but fairly stout three aught hook on here. And um, good keeper on there. So just go ahead and thread it through there. What you'll notice is it comes through and the belly on the dart spin is just wide open. So what you end up having to do is actually going down deep into the belly and grabbing just a little bit of skin. Wish I could show you. Gosh, this is still wet on the inside, but you could probably see here. I've got it rigged through just a little bit of skin. And then that way, it's going to stay. And that hook is not going to come flying up all the time. It's going to stay snug and rigged well. So, um, got it up there. And that is like my. My favorite way to rig the dart spin is on this BMC boxer head. Really good hook on there. So all I did was add the black switchblade on there. And you've got blades on the front and the back. Really cool deal here. Um, the, the dart spin by itself is a pretty subtle presentation, right? Um, the bait just runs straight. 
and that back blade, um, it's a tail spinner. So it's a, a different presentation. And, um, and I've always thought it's a little bit uninteresting, at least to me, when fishing it. Um, it doesn't feel quite right as it's swimming through the water. But putting a chatterbait blade on there could make it really interesting. I think the blade will still turn in the back. But when you get the vibration from the front, um, you get a totally different action. So I actually went out and threw this for a couple minutes today. And um, and it was a little bit weird, I will say. Had to run it really slow um, for it to feel right. So it, it would blow out and, um, and had some funky action. When, when swam quickly and because it's so light with an eighth ounce head here it wanted to come to the surface way too easily and it wasn't running um straight so i had to to reel it super slow but anyway i still really like this idea what i might do is throw a heavier swim bait head on there um and put the blade on there to just get a little bit more head on there um and put the blade on there to just get a little bit more stability and to have um it run and feel a little bit better uh through transmitting through the rod so alex rosenland you have a good rest of your night um uh, good luck finishing that schoolwork bj says i want to fish chatterbaits but i don't have any Want to get some, but I'm intimidated um, by them type of baits. I'm usually a finesse fisherman, lol. Um, you don't have to laugh at yourself, BJ. No big deal. Chatter baits are actually a lot more versatile than you'd think, and they're they're kind of a be beginner-friendly type of bait. That and like a whopper plopper. If you're trying to, to step up to power fishing, get a nice chatter bait. And a whopper popper, and uh, and you'll be game. So I would not be intimidated by chatter baits. You know, it, it's there are a lot of power fishing techniques that you can be intimidated by, and I get that. But when you say you're a finesse fisherman, what do you tend to throw, man? You want to start throwing jigs, swim jigs, crankbaits, and lipless. Well, right on. That's a good place to start. Swim baits and chatter baits um, are kind of my my two loves here in the last uh, year or two. But here, guys, here's the last. No, this isn't the last one, but this is probably my favorite and the weirdest. Check this out. Brandon Finsterwald, welcome to the live stream. Yes, you made it, man. Just picked up a Trash Master jig. Looks great. Yeah, we'll talk about that, man. All right, guys, check this out. This right here is the Six Cents Quake 70 lipless crankbait. And I think the Shad. No, I don't know what color this is called. Uh, but I absolutely love this color. And. Guess what I put on it? Yeah, that's right. I put a chatterbait blade, the queen tackle switchblade, onto the line tie of the lipless crank. I took the split ring off and I put this blade on here. So listen to the sound it makes. Clicking on the plastic. So interesting deal there i um i brought this one with me as well so I, I threw both of these guys for a few minutes each and um and this one did not want to run true i was fishing very shallow water so admittedly that could have affected um you know my review of both of these baits i didn't give them a, a real try i was only out for like 30 or 45 minutes so um i was fishing a a tiny pond that was you know a few feet deep and it was weedy so 
I was fishing this in skinny water. And this guy, like I said, was so light that trying to, to fish it somewhat quickly, it was blowing out of the water. And this guy, not letting it get down and be weighted properly, I had to reel it a little bit too early. It was wanting to run on its side a little bit too frequently. Now, a number of times I was able to get it to run properly. Um, and interestingly, I tossed it out. And on like my second cast, it was running on its side, but then I saw a bass trailing and, uh, and that was pretty sweet. So I tossed it out to this same exact spot. That bass turned around, saw it coming again. He, he flipped on it and ate it and, um, just had that entire front treble in his mouth. And he was a, you know, small little bass, but cool deal. Um, I was just testing out this bait and on like my third cast caught a fish. So not quite sure how I actually feel about a, um, uh, chatter trap, if you will, a rattle chatter. Um, I don't think it's a, a legitimate idea. At least I'm not sure, you know, cause you get that side to side vibration out of both baits. So. Who knows, but um, just trying to get the wheels turning a little bit in my head about what to possibly do with this thing. Now, here's another one. <laughs> what do you think about that? So here we have a chatterbait blade in gold. Now it's it's swinging freely, so I think it's going to get fouled up before the retrieve. You know, on the cast, this could be problematic, and I might need to put something like a piece of soft plastic up here to plug it in place, so that it's not going to move very far. But I haven't really decided how I'm going to do that yet. So anyway, I just put the blade on here yesterday. And here's the thought. Uh, this War Eagle buzz bait has a big old blade on there. And that's going to run on the surface. So the toad is going to run just subsurface. Or if you run the bait fast enough, it's, it's going to be on the surface. This blade and the line tie are going to be subsurface the entire retrieve. So is it possible that this could work? Maybe. I don't know. Um, some of these, these last ideas that I've had are just a little bit off the wall, I will admit. Uh, so who knows? You know, I, I think there's a better chance that something like this could work out. And I think it's obvious that you could take something like, you know, um, you could take something like this, guys. This is the Z-Man um, Project Z football jig. And because it's got a vertical line tie on it, you can easily just put that switchblade, slide it right through, and boom, you've got a chatterbait on this big old football jig. So you can leave it on bottom so the blade isn't doing much other than just perhaps giving off a little bit of flash, and then you can work the bait really slow pull it up and then kill it and let it fall and just literally just hop it off the bottom like you would a jig normally but you get a little bit more erratic action you get a little bit of sound from the blade um they could just be the ticket so i really like the the new cfl uh football head 
the swinging football head chatterbait. That new collaboration between Z-Man and Freedom. But um, but that's a, a slightly different type of bait because it imitates more of a swing head than a standard football uh, jig. So I think you work the baits a little bit different. You know, a swing head, um, you're going to work more like a crankbait, you know, winding along the bottom, just making steady contact with rocks on the bottom. But a football jig, you're going you're gonna to kind of thread in and out of the rocks and probably work a little bit slower, um, potentially hop a little bit more frequently, but you're going to work those baits quite a bit differently. So something like a, another type of jig would be a very obvious thing to turn into a chatterbait. But I was trying to think a little bit outside the box um, about other uses. Obviously, we had talked about uh, that toad that I sent to Will Perriman, but uh, but I had a few other ideas. So let me know what you think of some of those wild ideas. Brandon Finsterwald over on YouTube said, picked up a Trashmaster jig, looks great. I love the idea of Texas rigging a jig, plus the skirt comes um, perfect length. Yes, it does. I don't know where my jig box is, bro. <clears throat> hmm. I would show you a trash master right now. I will. Bang. Don't know why my jigs are over here, but. So you're right. I don't think I trimmed this skirt at all. They already have it trimmed right to the bottom of the hook. It is nice and short, straight out of the package. No trimming necessary on the Trashmaster jig. This is by uh, Game Changer Lures, which is owned by Steve Parks, the same guy who owns the rights to Rage Tail and all of the baits um, put out by Strike King, you know, all of the Rage Tail baits. So, here, as you can see, the the head of this bait is um, at an angle, which is good for a lot of different applications, uh, for flipping, for swimming, for dragging. So this jig is going to work in a lot of scenarios. And then um, it's got a screw lock keeper molded to a piece of lead not molded but um you know clipped on it's a spring so you could put an an owner cps spring on here if you would rather and then it's got an ewg hook so really cool design there it doesn't have a weed guard but rather has an ewg hook built into the jig so I think the hookup ratio is still good, but essentially this is like a, a pegged Texas rig with a screw lock keeper, right? So um, it is a cool idea for sure. They're five bucks a jig, so a little bit pricey, but I had to check them out last year. Here's same exact concept, even though I thought that jig was uh, patented. This is the exact same concept, but by a different bait maker. I forget who makes this one. I always get the manufacturers mixed up. I thought it was Venom, but I don't think it is. Um, and look at that. Screw lock, EWG hook. Got a little bit more appropriate of an angle on the hook. It's already out. Hookup ratio is going to be just a little bit better on this bait here. And I like the detail. You get, you know, eyes on the head of this bait. And you get a vertical line tie. So guess what? You could put the queen tackle switchblade on this bait. But you could not put it on the game changer lures trash master jig. So anyway, just a... Uh, little bit of a thought i'm gonna hop off on instagram just so I'm, i stop looking over there 
not really um, engaged with anybody over there right now. People just kind of hop in, hop out, and that's how it works over there. So screw that. Hey, guys, there's eight people in the stream here on YouTube. 11 thumbs up. Really appreciate you guys. If for some reason you haven't personally hit that thumbs up button already, do that favor for me. Looks like one person just did. Thank you so much. But yeah, man, that Trash Master Jig is a good one. Uh, I don't know what just happened. Just went all the way up to the top of the comments. Ryan says, season opened here 10 days ago. I haven't made it out yet. I've been busy with work and farming. Yep. Right on. Looking for a new fishing boat for my buddy and I, says Ryan. Good for you, Ryan. I, I hope that all works well, works out well, and that you guys follow through. That would be huge. I would love to get a boat. Alex Rosenlund is peacing out. Hope you have a good rest of your night. I know I'm, I need to do some catching up, some serious catching up on these comments. So, I think I already said goodnight to Alex. What what am I doing? All right, there we are. There we are. I'm catching up quick. I'm almost here. Tyler, if you're cool, how about we give those baits that I sent to BJ? Um, sure, I'm happy to. BJ, I mean, I just I don't want to do wrong by Jack. You know, I I haven't heard back from him, Riley. So um, either way. You know, I'd be happy to to send these to BJ and maybe throw in a, an extra thing or two. But I, you know, I was hoping maybe Jack would respond and we could actually just just do right by each other and swap packages uh, that were accidentally sent to us. So whatever, we'll see how that works out. Brandon says chatterbait, chatterblade on a Ned rig next. Yeah, I thought about that for sure. Uh, you know, if they made the switchblade in a small size, I would do that for sure. But uh, they only make it in the regular and the large. So next I'm going to try the large and see just how much bigger um, that gap is in the middle and how much bigger of baits it would be able to accommodate to just see if I, I might be able to. Uh, to do it on on you know bigger stuff right like i was thinking it would be pretty sick to throw it on something like this and chop the tail off and then you've got a huge you know almost six inch bait with a, a big old tail chasing behind it and you could have like a half ounce head on there um You know, and initially I was wanting to do it on this, but uh, but like I said, this is the A dot owner beast, and when I I put it on here, the gauge of the eye on this hook is too fat. That um that once I put the blade on there, that it wouldn't move um, side to side. So. Had to scratch that. I'll admit, I did put one of the switchblades on a Tokyo rig. 
um, to see if it would work and um, and learned pretty quickly that that, that doesn't work. Um, the blade would not actually um, engage. So BJ, we know you weren't asking for stuff, so no big deal. Wait, Riley, you talked to uh to Jack and he said he's been using those baits. That's weird. Did you not I hate to be, you know, assuming, but did you not um uh, leave a note or anything in there that might have given him a uh an idea that that wasn't meant for him? Anyway, who cares? Very, very true what you say, BJ. Riley is uh, super mature for her age. Doing right by people from a, a very young age. So good for you, Riley. I'm proud to be your friend. So uh, thanks for hanging out. Family and friends. Yep. Fact. People call you an old soul. Me too, Ron. I think I'm going to take my daughters tomorrow to the reservoir. And um, and we're going to try and catch some trout. Well, no worries, Riley. As I said, whatever. We'll uh we'll figure it out. You know, Jack probably should have known better. And um that's okay, right? We all make mistakes and um and that's okay. I just noticed as you guys saw on the the live unboxing of the package, when I saw the letter to Jack, I immediately knew, oh gosh, this I don't think this is meant for me. Uh, whatever's in here. So um, my bad, you know, I'd like to, to help get these in, in the right hands, but, um, but that's okay. If, if Jack didn't get the, the right idea or feel the same way when, when he opened his and, uh, and it was addressing me. So whatever. Uh, Yeah, no, I texted Jack, and um, and it sounds like Riley's been in touch with him, but I think Riley just told him to to hang on to him and not worry about it. So I don't think he's going to send me those baits that he's already uh, been using and fishing with. So uh, either way, not a really not a big deal, BJ. Especially because Riley freaking went to the post office today and sent out another package so riley you're crazy crazy awesome and uh and generous so i just placed my monthly order at discount tackle uh yesterday with like half of the stuff in that order was for the giveaway for this month so i'm excited um uh, gonna do like three more presentations uh, in this month's giveaway so we're going to do a nico rig setup we're going to do a bluegill swim bait and we are going to do one other what is it oh we're going to do the micro jig and the trd cross so really excited for uh for the giveaway it's going to be a you know $35 retail value roughly should be some baits that work really well uh, as kind of a, a one-two punch type of setup 
So we'll talk about those once we get them um, in and post the giveaway in like a week from now. Uh, I, I try not to have the giveaway run for more than about a week. So I try to post it in uh, just about the last week of the month and have it run through the end of the month. Now, uh, this month we're, we're kind of finishing out the spawn. Next month we'll do post-spawn. And then, you know, for July, August, September, uh, we'll really do summer fishing, different stages of summer fishing. So. We're really still very much in spring fishing. Here we're still um, in pre-spawn. We've got fish starting to bed, uh, prepare beds, and some are a little bit more protective than others, but they're still mostly in the stage where um, you know you can intimidate them. You throw something in there and they leave and they circle around and they come back. And um, you're not immediately getting them to to get aggressive and flare and uh, you know and and blow on your bait and things like that. So I'd say in the next week or two, it's gonna really uh, you know it, it's it's peak season for bed fishing here in Colorado. Ryan says, tempted to go fishing uh, to a little pond tomorrow. Not sure, though, if it's tick season here. Oh, you say it is tick season here, and they're bad this year. Ooh, that would suck, dude. Uh, hmm. What, what would you trade? How many fish would you have to catch in an outing to make it worth it? to get uh, a couple ticks that then you have to to remove it's a freaking good question man you know i mostly just have to deal with gnats and mosquitoes i'm not as much ticks i don't i don't do a lot of high mountain um uh, ponds lakes reservoir fishing here you know i do live at five thousand feet elevation but, but that's not high mountain here um you know, that would be more like 10,000. BJ, you're right. We need a lot more Rileys in this world. But, you know, they don't make them like that anymore. Riley's an old soul. She's a good person. And uh, she's wise beyond her years. So. Yeah, it would be cool if we had more Rileys in this world, but unfortunately, it feels like we've got less and less of them these days. <laughs> well, hell yeah, Riley. So, Riley, I will say I was really looking forward to... Uh, To your tungsten. <laughs> and that's what's unfortunate about, you know, the package that you sent to Jack. Because I don't know how much tungsten you threw in there. But, um, but you know, I've got a bunch of these guys rigged up already. Look at this. I've got uh, five Tokyo rigs rigged up and as you can see i've got two four five six seven tungsten weights you know that's that's 20 <laughs> 20 or 25 bucks worth of tungsten just sitting on these five rigs and anyway i am i'm pumped to throw these as you can see i've got three of these with uh rage bugs on them this is the standard size rage bug on a 4 aught EWG. This is 
standard size raised bug on a four aught flipping hook. As you can see, that keeper there, shank of the hook. And then here we've got the Magnum Rage Bug rigged on a 5 aught EWG. This I've got a 3 aught flipping hook on the 6 cent Stroker Craw. I think that's going to make an awesome flipping bait, swimming bait. Um, I think this is going to end up being very, very versatile. You know, it's got the body profile and shape of like a bug, craw, or beaver style bait. But these kicker tails are actually more like a double tail grub than anything else. So really cool bait there. And then here, this is the 3 aught EWG. And I've got that on, you know, a little baby Pit Boss or Pit Boss Jr. So I am ready to throw the Tokyo rig this year for sure. Um, this is one that I am really excited to uh, to have more in my arsenal and have one rigged up kind of at all times you know last year it was the ned rig and the chatterbait that i really set out to, to to get to understand and to try out different uh times and places and baits and weights and um and really get kind of that presentation down swim baits i've been playing around with for the last couple of years and still mostly you know, play in this this range that is like, you know, 4.8, 5.8, uh, 6 inches, 6.5, you know, 5 inches. So uh, kind of that 5 to 7 inch swim bait um, is my, my sweet spot. It's something that I think is a substantial meal. For a fish to to make that decision to go after, but not necessarily the big big swim bait game where um, you have to have dedicated gear. You know, something like this baby boom boom is a this is a four and a half inch swim bait, and you throw this thing on this owner beast four aught hook. And you see, it's designed just perfectly for this guy, where when you set the hook, boom, you've got a ton of clearance there to get him. And um, this bait has an awesome, subtle, realistic action to it. Nice head, um, head roll. And um, and kind of a, a very middle amount of, of tail kick to it. Not overly aggressive, but not, not lazy, if you will. I will say, and here's a hot take, okay? Uh, I don't think I've mentioned this before, like on a video at all before. But, guys, this, this beautiful, beautiful bait right here. This is the Beast Coast 6.5 Creep, okay? I showed you guys this recently, that um, that this bait is, like, coming apart unnecessarily um, and prematurely. I've only fished this bait specifically a few times and um, and really, like, set the hook a couple of times with it and i think i even used mend it once on it already but um but this guy is is falling apart just from where it was poured the layers and it needs to be put back together that is not my main gripe with it but this guy this bait look at this tail 
Obviously, you can see how stiff it is. It has a little bit of kick to it. This thing has to be fished. Let's just say it's not my style, okay? Um, Alex Rudd and a few other guys swear by this bait. And I'll admit, I, I really want to like it. But it doesn't, it doesn't quite fit with my style. Um, it is the exact opposite of like a Kitek swing impact fat. So this bait, as you can see, is just limp as can be, right? I mean, I can't even show you the action of the tail without holding it up and down. But with the slightest pull on this, the tail is going to wag. On this bait here, dead at a slow speed. It has it has no action at all. So this I would call a speed sensitive bait where it has to be swum a little bit faster or it has to be swum around cover that you know you're going to make contact with because then that's the only way to do it is to fish this painfully slow knowing it looks like nothing coming through until boom it hits something and all of a sudden that tail just kicks a little bit and is enough for a fish to engulf it so you know with something like a perch that is typically a deeper water bait fish um i i initially thought that that could be a realistic way for me to to fish this bait is low and slow painfully slow but i lost my first one to a snag just in between some rocks on bottom, fishing this from the bank. And this second one, I've had a few issues hooking up. I've had a few issues with confidence in um, in just how slowly to fish it. So honestly, it's just not for me. The Creep 6.5, um, it's, a, it's a cool looking bait. I think it's uh, it's well designed. But in terms of its density and how heavy it is and, um, and the way that it's um, – I don't know. I could never get the hook to lay flush on the back. I had to fiddle with rigging it a couple of times. And like I said, because of the way that they pour these colors – I find that it's not, um, it didn't hold together very well. So anyway, Kitek is the other end of the spectrum. Very, very long tapered tail there. I've gotten more accustomed to that type of bait. And I've worked in something like the 7-inch Megabass Spark Shad, which is Kind of an in between, but a lot closer to a Kitek. This is going to be a lot heavier in the head. Uh, so it's a pretty stable bait, but it does have this long tapered tail. And um, and it's a heavy bait, but really like it in this seven inch size. Also like it in the five inch. You know, that's a little bit more of a common bait that a lot of people have. And that's this one here. Also super soft, very long, skinny tapered tail there, right? A lot of good, good action out of that bait. But the 7 inch is just a little bit extra special. So I said I didn't like that 6.5 creep, but Beast Coast makes the 4.5 inch Miyagi swimmer, which if you can see here, actually is a lot more limp falls over and um and has this very soft collapsible body very different than the creep 6.5 and i've had a lot better success 
in that hook laying flush against the back. So, in my opinion, just a, a better designed bait overall, the Miyagi. It's, it's easier to rig properly. It's got a, a much more medium or medium aggressive action. That tail wants to, to rise up a little bit. So, it looks a little bit more like this when it's swimming as opposed to some swim baits that are going to be a little bit more straight. This tail wants to rise up a little bit, which is why I have that blade on there, actually. This bait here is a lot bigger. It's got a similar back to what I just showed you in the Creep 6.5, but what you'll notice is just just a, a little bit softer right it does want to stand up but it has quite a bit more natural action to it so while it is still a little bit speed sensitive this guy is still meant to be swum relatively high in the water column really awesome bait here this is the Optimum boom boom swim bait in the six inch size in the weedless version. And then, of course, we've talked about the Mega Bass Mag Draft Freestyle, which I was just showing you guys. Um, I got these last year, they, they just came out last year and they're awesome. I caught my first bass of the year on this bait right here. This is the MB Gizzard color. Got these rigged on 6 aught owner beast hooks. That is a uh, quarter ounce weight, which in my opinion is ideal for the waters that I fish, which are predominantly shallow. You know, we're talking um, less than 10 feet. So. Ryan says, have you thrown a Huddleston? No, I actually haven't. Um, for whatever reason, I don't I don't really have a, uh, a legitimate reason for you, man. Um, I don't have a Huddleston. I've got a couple of baits like it, uh, but no actual Huddlestons. Whoa, just smash that. So... Here I've got my box of stuff that um, that I've been throwing recently. Like I showed you that that four inch or four and a half inch baby boom boom. This is the downsized version of the bait that I just showed you. That six inch version was rigged on a nine aught trocar half ounce, and like I told you, this four and a half inch is rigged on a four aught owner beast. And that's an eighth ounce, I believe. So anyway, really like this for a finesse swim bait. Um, if you are willing to spend a, a few extra bucks, right? Otherwise, of course, you could go with something, you know, like Kitech or, you know, a, a Rage Swimmer. Or, of course, you know, a a diesel minnows or something along those lines. I, I think we will do a series of swim bait videos where I recommend different swim baits at different price points. Um, and, and we'll do that at another time where we, we first address all the swim baits that, that I use and think you ought to look into that are say in the ballpark of, um, you know, less than seven dollars a pack, and then we'll go from there to like fifteen bucks, and then we'll go from there up. And um, I think those three categories kind of cover most when it comes to soft plastic swim baits. So anyway, we'll we'll definitely talk about that at another time. Do 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 reeling in bass. 
getting a new casting combo tomorrow. Good for you, man. Oh, Jack. Jack attack. Jack, you got a 40 pound carp, bro? Are you kidding me? Dang, dude. That's pretty crazy. Yo, Jack, we got our uh, our packages mixed up, by the way. Did you know that? Oh, I don't, I don't even know if he's here. Do, 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 do. BJ Harris. Do any of you have like some good finesse swim baits and some good finesse jigs to use for people who have never fished with them? Yeah, uh, yeah. Depends on how finessey you want to go on the swim baits, dude. But we've talked about it before, and I think there's a sweet spot size. Right here, 3.3 inch from Kitek, 3.25 inch from Strike King. Very simple finesse swim bait. Okay. Take something like that and you rig it on just a, like a ball head jig. Okay. The two that I like to use most frequently I already mentioned one and that's that VMC boxer jig head but even more so with this 3.3 inch size what I like to use is the Gamakatsu um round ball jig head okay these come in uh two aught and three aught hook sizes this is the two aught i think a three sixteenths ounce size and just going to line it up on the side and uh and bring it straight on through and you're gonna see that this setup here is super basic Super basic, but this is the new school grub, dude. So back in the day, um, everybody would just throw a grub on a ball head jig, right? These days, boom, finesse swim bait. 2.8 inch swim bait would be like the deal, um, you know, a couple of years ago. But there, there wasn't really a gap, you know. It was 2.8 inch was the size, but it's tiny, tiny. And then 3.8 inch is what people would use for like trailers and such. But in the last couple of years, this in betweener 3.3 inch size has come out. And when it comes to finesse swim baiting, that guy's the one right there. Not intimidating whatsoever, BJ. So get you a pack. Um, you know, as you can see, as I showed you, I've got kind of a mixed pack here of the Rage Swimmers. This is just like that that pearl white color, and this is the Sexy Shad. Those are, are great colors to start out with. Only reason that I've got these dark colors of the, the Swing Impact Fats are that I got them super cheap. Every now and again, Kitek will try and offload some of their their soft plastics. So um, anyway, I I I check in on that from time to time to just see what baits are 
are on clearance and uh, yeah managed to get a lot of these swing impact fats for cheap especially in some of these colors that they were kind of discontinuing this electric June bug was one of those colors so anyway that would be my finesse swim bait recommendation Unless, <laughs> BJ, or was it Ryan? Who Who's asking? Yeah, BJ. Okay. Other one that I would, I would check out is this guy, Z-Man Minnows. Okay. Three-inch swim bait. And it pairs perfectly with the Z-Man Trout Eye. Jig head. This is the one eighth ounce size, which is their lightest that they uh, that they sell. I believe this is a, a two aught hook. We can double check that. And it is same size hook as that last one that we just put on the three three. And what we're going to do, as we've talked about, Z-Man can be a little bit tricky to rig. So, we're going to just try and go as straight as possible. And then once you get up to the bait keeper, you grab the plastic and pull it up. Grab it by the neck up over that keeper, and then you can kind of straighten it out. And voila, here. Whoop. Goodness gracious, what is going on? I feel like this guy is slippery right now, and if I was going to fish it, I would throw. A drop of super glue on there because that's being uh, a little irritable at the moment. But this right here is a wicked finesse swim bait, BJ. Really cool because it has that big eye on it. It's got a nice medium wire hook on it. And it's a tiny profile bait. But gorgeous color here. This is called Purple Death. Purple top, chartreuse bottom with that kind of purpley blue flake in there all throughout. So three inch minnows swim bait and the one eighth ounce trout eye jig head, both made by Z-Man. That right there is a absolutely killer pairing when it comes to finesse swim baiting. So those would be my two... My top two recommendations for um, entry level finesse swim baiting. You know, if you're intimidated and you're looking to throw something light um, on a spinning reel, boom, those will cover your bases for sure. And when it comes to finesse jigs, I've really just got uh, two that I would suggest for you. And I think Ryan mentioned one. He said striking bitsy bug. Yep. Any of the smaller Kytex or strike kings you'll be happy with as well. Yeah, man. So, um, bitsy bug. Okay. They make the bitsy bug in a, like a bunch of different sizes. This is a smaller size. You can tell from the size of the head. I think this is a one eighth ounce. Um, I'll show you, for example, like here's a, a three sixteenths next to each other. No, that's a one eighth. Come on, boy. Maybe these are all three sixteenths and I was just wrong.
Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> Would be nice to know. All I know is this one is a quarter ounce. The Striking Bitsy Bug is a very basic jig, okay? It, it's made with a nice skirt. It's made with an okay uh, weed guard. It's made with an okay hook. And, uh, and it gets the job done. It's a $2 jig. And, uh, and I like it just fine. Now, if you can find the Booyah Baby Boo Jig in stock somewhere, and I've bought this on Amazon, um, I've bought it from Bass Pro and Cabela's, a few other places, but this, this jig is not always in stock, but it's like the same price, and the skirt is much higher quality. The hook is a must-add two-aught hook. Um, it's just a much better overall jig. So that baby boo jig from Booyah is a really good one. And then, um, and then the one that I I kind of preach about BJ, but have talked about a lot recently and I'm going to give some away on this month's giveaway is the Z-Man Finesse Shrooms Micro Jig. Dude, these guys are, are killer. Here's what it looks like uh, straight out of the pack. Okay. It's got kind of this um, this skirt that is definitely too long, like you can take a centimeter, almost an inch off of there. You know, the hook is a standard Ned Rig size one light wire hook. And the weight is a little bit heavier. It comes in a one eighth and a, uh, a three sixteenths. And most of the ones that I have are that three sixteenths. Simply because I intend to fish this um, on bottom, right? I'm not going to fish this like a Ned Rig, so I don't want it to be that light of weight. If you notice here, I trimmed the skirt up significantly on this one that I went ahead and put the trailer on. And what I used for a trailer was a TRD Ticklers, and I trimmed that way up too. So. Uh, this is just a little, little bite-sized profile, and it gets bit. So I've I've got them in uh, in all sorts of setups. I've got them with the craws, like I showed you. I've got them with the hogs. Oh, I got them with the tubes, and um, yeah, the list goes on, dude. I've, I mean, I've even got this one that I, I didn't trim the skirt, but I threaded on a bigger trailer. And this here is the TRD Minnows by Z-Man. This is the Moccasin Craw color, which is like a black and red mostly. And on it, I've got a California Craw colored TRD minnows, which as you know, is mostly like a black and red on top, and then like a a watermelon red or like a chartreuse red flake bottom. And um look at how much that bends over. You just get a ton of action out of the tail there. But I've I've swum this and I've got some underwater footage of this thing. And if you don't let this settle, if you hop it and move it along um it looks extremely realistic and lifelike like a fish um it's a really cool deal so those finesse shrooms micro jigs from z-man come two to a pack for 4.99 retail and you can get them for um, a little over four bucks from discount tackle so bj go get you some micro jigs from Z-Man, from Discount Tackle, and uh, and some three-inch minnows swim baits, 
or some of those 3.25 rage swimmers, and uh, and you'll be good to go. The 3.3 three Kytex too, though, man. I mean, let me try and catch up. I know I'm way late. On these comments. You what happened? I am so sorry. Riley says BJ start with top water like Berkeley Chopper or Whopper Frogs. Whopper frogs poppers? Uh Whopper Plopper Frogs Poppers, yeah. Darren says, have you ever tried the Biospawn Exoswim? If so, what color do you like for bluegill and what size? Um, I have not actually tried the Exoswim, but um, but from what I know and have heard, it's a pretty good swim bait. Um, I would say now that they make it in, in most sizes, I would get that same size, like a 3.3 three or a 3.8. Um, if you're trying to imitate bluegill and of their colors, oh, I mean, if not just their standard green pumpkin, um, what's that? They make like an electric blue chartreuse color that is a surprisingly good one that would I think imitate bluegill pretty well, Darren. So uh, anyway, check that one out. I, I don't have experience with the exoswim, so sorry, man. And Riley, what did you say? Uh, I'll add some tungsten to your package, and I'll send another one out tomorrow. But yeah, I gave Jack um, your eight packs of tungsten. And two real grips and two packs of rage swimmers and two custom cranks. Yo, Jack, you got my baits, bro. I don't know if Jack is still in here. Darren went down to the Jersey Shore, just got back. Love the community here and welcoming. Absolutely. Yeah, Ryan, the 2.75 is tiny, dude. Uh, I think I've showed you guys before, haven't I? I should have left that 3.3 out. But take a look at this this 2.75, man. All right, so here's the side-by-side -side comparison. And it's it's hard to show you until you actually hold these, but I'm telling you the 325 feels way bigger, so much more substantial, um especially fatter. So it just, it feels like fish are going to treat it like a better meal, yet it's, it's not more intimidating because lengthwise it's, I mean, it's just a half an inch longer, but it probably weighs close to twice as much. You know, since I have my scale here, I'll tell you guys right now what it does weigh. And I know we can get off track and I'm sorry guys, but. I find this stuff interesting. So the 2.75 inch Rage Swimmer is 3 grams and change. 3.07 I got. The 3.25 inch Rage Swimmer 
is 5.23 grams. Literally almost twice as heavy and it's just barely longer. So I rest my case. All right. Three point two five is the deal. That three, the three seven five or or three eight, um, I think is an awesome swim jig trailer. I think it's you know a great standalone swim bait as well. In fact, for a while it was like what what I threw. You know that black shad Kai Tech is a sweet color. It's mostly discontinued now, but they kind of brought some of those colorways back this year. Ray, by the way, welcome to the stream, brother. Um, I thought I saw you in here. Maybe not. Maybe so. Did I see you in here, Ray? Or no? Now I'm scrolling around too much. I'm going to lose my place. Maybe Ray never got in here. So Darren, Trashmaster Jig, we talked about that earlier, dude. I showed everybody. In fact, um, I, I think it's a, a good design jig. I think it's cool. I think it's super weedless. And uh, I like that it doesn't have a weed guard, so it looks a little bit more uh, realistic to the fish. It's just different, right? So it's like having a, a pegged Texas rig all... Uh, in a jig I, I think it's good for uh for flipping uh, for fishing around uh timber and wood cover specifically but i think it'll also do well in grass it, it seems like a pretty good jig i only have one in my arsenal and i didn't throw it much last year so hard to say but uh they look like they're made pretty well and uh for five bucks not the greatest deal if you were part of the uh the, the Carl's uh, Bait and Tackle Club, I think you could get them for like, you know, 350 which in my opinion would be worth it. I think throwing a swim bait on one of those could, uh, could be a good deal for sure. BJ, you're so appreciative. Jack, you said Luz is a good brand, right? I got the American Hero in the bluish color. Yeah, Luz American Hero is a uh, it's a solid, uh, you know, value setup for sure. You say it was only fifty eight bucks. Yep, that sounds about right. The um, American Hero, like I said, is is kind of one of their lower end setups, and uh, and it's still made really well. So. I know a lot of people that recommend it. So good for you, man. Hope you like that. Let us know, Jack. Jack says Texas rig for sure. Do, do, do. Darren said, when would you fish a jig over a Texas rig or a Texas rig over a jig? Um, A little bit of that is um, is personal preference, but I think it depends. Um, on the cover that you're in, uh, I would throw a Texas rig around grass more, um, especially a weightless Texas rig, but um, but also a heavier pegged texas rig i'll throw in grass whereas a uh more of a standard jig i'm going to throw around rock but there's a lot of crossover right so with more of a, a flipping jig i'll throw around uh wood or isolated pieces of cover but i'll throw more of like a uh, a football jig or arky head around rock so um you know, each has its 
its place, but a Texas rig can kind of serve as a, a do-it-all, if you will. You can fish a Texas rig like you would a jig in a lot of places, and then um, it'll also go places that some jigs will not. So Texas rig is just a little bit more versatile, and um, yeah, I don't know if that answers your question, Darren. Sorry about it, man. You said, I just want the Biospawn Exopod to come out. They look killer. I think it is out, dude. I'm pretty sure you can get those now. Yeah, BJ, I've got most of them, dude. Super Mexican, what up, bro? Guess what, guess what, guess what? Picked up the Shimano Corrado DC the other day. Good for you, man. Congratulations on the new purchase. Hope you like it. Man, I think you'll probably uh, be happy with it for sure. It's very well made, real. Um, only thing is whether you think um, you know that digital chip is for you or not, right? I I haven't bought into it or um, or bought any DC reels yet, so that's just personal preference. Um, I will probably um, try it at some point. But as for making the switch over to all DC reels, I don't know that I will ever uh, do that. But I also don't know whether the market's going to move more in that direction moving forward or not either. Can't quite read the market in that way. Another beer, Tyler, and you won't care, says Ron. Yeah, man, I'm going to finish this one right now. Maybe go grab another one real quick uh, and hang out for just a little bit longer. Mm-hmm. The chrome lipless, yeah, there's some sweet baits. Glad you're catching some fish. Jack, you catching fish on those baits, man? You know, I have some baits that were meant for you. You have some baits that were meant for me, Jack. But um, I'm glad to hear that you immediately put those to work and have been catching fish on them already, dude. So good for you. Um, and thanks for being in here and hanging out. Once again, Jack, appreciate you being in here, dude. Super Mexican. Um, yeah, I was reading the older comments, and Lose is a great company. Had the, the Lose Mach 2 baitcaster before. Man, I loved it. Yeah, I've got one of those. Um, have that combo. I think I've told you guys about it as my chatter bait set up for this year. We got a 7.3. Um, it's called their Crankback Series. It's a 7.3 medium heavy, um, moderate fast, I believe. No, medium heavy, moderate, I'm pretty sure. And, uh, of course, all the lose reels are like a 7.5 to 1 gear ratio. But I like that Mach 2 combo for sure. And, uh. Of course, the green color doesn't doesn't hurt. I don't mind it. Paddle tails are too expensive for me. What do you mean paddle tails are too expensive for you, dude? Oh, I just skipped ahead again. What just happened? Never bought a chatterbait. Found one the other day, though, and I used it for the first time. Well, good for you, man. Yeah, give it a try. Uh, and keep your eyes peeled. You can get some of the original Chatterbaits from Z-Man, you know, for $4 on Discount Tackle. And sometimes you can get them even cheaper uh, if you find them on sale other places. But Chatterbait is a, a, a deadly, deadly presentation that you ought to be utilizing, man. What kind of baits do you normally throw, Super Mexican? Jack says, I normally stick to fishing small baits because I only fish small ponds. For sure. Riley says, yeah, same with me. Chatterbaits are the shit. I noticed that now. Thanks, Tyler. My pleasure, Riley. You're going you're gonna to get hooked on chatterbaits. It's going to start being your, uh, your go-to search lure when you get somewhere. You'll realize just how efficient you are with it and how frequently... You go out and catch a fish 
on one of your first three, four, five casts uh, with a chatterbait. It's crazy. That even happened to me just uh, like two outings ago. I go out and I think I was throwing a swim bait and then a shallow diving crankbait and then whipped out the chatterbait. And on my first cast with the chatterbait, you know, that fire craw color, boom, got one. So, um, yeah, the chatterbait is wicked for sure. Darren says, anyone know a good app to host a tournament for online fishing? I do not. Wish I could tell you, Darren. BJ says, I like them small looking swim baits. Uh, that's what I like to throw. What do you mean that's what you like to throw? You say you don't have finesse swim baits. You were asking for for recommendations, man. What what baits do you normally throw, BJ? Usually use yum dingers or zoom flukes, says Super Mexican. Right on. Those are good baits to throw for uh, for shallow ponds, for sure. The stream delay is bad. No, it it's not a delay on the stream. It's just me delayed on the comments. Dude, I'm trying to catch up here. All right, guys, I'm I'm catching up. Someone hit the thumbs down button. That's jacked up. That's not cool. Your stream delays ten minutes. Get out of here. It's live. I also got a tele telescopic rod, says Jack. So I can put it in my backpack and ride my bike to pond. Yep, that's a practical idea. Good for you, man. Um, I'd probably just get a two-piece and hold it in one hand and ride my bike with the other hand. But uh, I, I think that's an awesome idea. And I've, I'll admit that I've, I've considered it before. I'm not considering it anymore, but um, but it's definitely crossed my mind before, especially when I was first getting into fishing. Darren, are you asking me what made you want to start a fishing YouTube channel? Um. Uh, And BJ says, I mean, I like throwing finesse style baits. Sorry. Okay, I hear you. You're just, you consider yourself a finesse fisherman in general. And that 3.3 inch swim bait fits into that category. I mean, for sure, man. If you're throwing it on a, even, let's say, the, the heavier 316 sounds ball head, um, you know, that whole bait is going to weigh three eighths of an ounce um, between the head and the bait. They're like five grams each, right? So it's still finessey for sure. And that would be the heavier side of, uh, of that. So here's, I got, I got a couple more that we'll talk about in a minute. Okay, BJ, but I want to answer Darren's question. And um, so the reason that I started a, a fishing YouTube channel was I guess just that, um, you know, I I fell in love with with bass fishing and um, and learning as much as possible about it and about the baits um, a few years ago. This was probably three, four years ago. And I think it was some of... I mean, some of the Guggen squad, like Lunkers TV specifically, uh, did a lot of underwater bait footage uh, back in like 2016 and 2017. And I liked watching a lot of that stuff. And um, and I would also watch a lot of Fluke Master and Tactical Bassin and, um, you know, uh, Baitman TV. So um, there are a few channels that I've been watching for a long, long time. And then the last couple of years, uh, I've gotten into watching a handful of others that have been pretty consistent. 
And like I said, I am just, I'm passionate about learning and trying new things. And I don't know how many times I've mentioned this before, but I also have a passion for sharing knowledge and for teaching and coaching. Um, I've got a background um, of being a sports coach. I was a swim coach and and, um, I coached some tennis as well. And um, I was a tutor for English when I lived in Costa Rica. And um, so I, and I really strongly considered being a teacher as my job. And so I just, I genuinely enjoy teaching people. So the reason that I created this channel was pretty much to regurgitate the information that I've been learning from a lot of the people that I look up to, to keep it organized and to teach you guys. Um, So it helps solidify and teach myself the stuff that I've already learned and then to help teach you guys in a practical way, slow it down a little bit and uh, and break it up into just different chunks and uh, and allow you to take in the content in a slightly different manner than how I did the first time around. So anyway, hope that makes sense to you guys. Hope you can appreciate where I'm coming from. BJ says, I'm so glad he started his channel because he's a great teacher and he's made it um, he's made a great family here on on here. Everyone helps each other out. Yep, absolutely. Um, totally, totally agree. So far, so good. You know, we we're growing really quickly here right now. Uh, the channel has grown a lot in the last couple of months. A couple of my videos are getting a lot of views, and I'm sure the giveaway last month helped a little bit in gaining some subscribers over from Instagram. But um but we're at like 1600 plus subscribers right now and uh you know this is the first real month since being monetized on YouTube and I've already made like 50 bucks which isn't a lot of money but um but it's more than I thought it would be quite frankly for for that first month of just flipping the switch of having ads on the videos. Um, I had no idea what to expect, but I, I thought it would take a long time to generate really any money. So to see it already coming in, uh, you know, that quickly from a few videos, you know, there are a couple of videos that are getting a lot of views, but, uh, but it gives me hope. Right. And it it gives me ideas of other content to create that I know is going to cater to the masses and um, and provide value to a lot of you guys, as well as people who are out there on Google or YouTube searching for how to rig this bait, how to do this, how to do that, how to uh, fish this or what is this presentation um, or what's the deal with this bait? Um, What do these baits look like underwater? So. My channel is going to be a lot more educational and informative than, say, entertaining. You'll get a lot more uh, conversation and exploring and experimenting than you will just uh, like fishing videos, right? Jack, lol, I have 41 subs. Um, no reason to laugh, dude. No big deal. Uh, I, I'd always be happy to give advice if you've got any questions uh, when it comes to how to how to grow a YouTube channel, how to build this kind of thing, how to uh, make content that people are are looking for. That's the main thing, by the way. Uh, one is make more content. Two is make content that people want to see more so than content that you want to make. And that's where, you know, it really gets gray, where you start wandering a bit, right? And you have to wonder, why are you doing it, right? Is it is it for you and your own um, mental health and well-being, or are you doing it for other people? So some people just make you know, fishing videos because they like to, to relive the moment. It's like, it's like home videos, right? 
Um, and they want to be able to, to share these epic days on the water and cool secrets and, um, and cast it catch videos and big fish. And, um, you know, it, it is gone in a totally different direction over the last few years. What, uh, fishing vlogging videos have become, you know, and, um, and I was never really interested in making those types of videos of starting out the video by saying, what's up guys, you know, I'm headed out to the pond and these are the conditions and this is what I'm fishing with and let's see what we're dealing with. And then uh, bringing you through my whole time on the water and then uh, trying to, to wrap up the video. It's just, a, it's a ton of work uh, to get all of the footage that you need. It's a ton of work to edit that footage and make it a compelling video that people are going to want to watch. And then, um, yeah, there were a couple other things I wanted to say, but, but that's not necessarily what, uh, what fills my cup, right? What, what I'm looking to do here on YouTube at the moment. So you say, I love the channels, uh, like these that care about teaching and about their viewers success. Unlike other channels, keep up the great work. You're going to go big one day. I hey, appreciate it, Darren. It's nice of you to say. But last part, didn't want to sound mean. Meant like you're growing. Uh, hope it didn't come out the wrong way. No, no, absolutely. Riley says, Tyler, do you have any six cents jigs and do you have any hybrid jigs by six cents? Um, no, I don't have any hybrid jigs by six cents. I just have the um the the divine swim jigs and um and they're awesome so the divine swim jig comes in a few different colors this hook is a perfect four or five aught medium wire hook with a screw lock keeper on it um I think it's one of my favorite, if not my favorite, overall swim jig, period. And I've got a few of them. Really, really like them, especially in that 3 8 ounce size. But, um, but no, I just haven't tried their other jigs. Um, mostly because their jigs are expensive, right? You pay 5 bucks per jig. So I'm trying to, to wait until I can either find them on clearance or there's a, a site-wide sale. Or something else like that where I can save a little bit of money and get them for cheaper. But still, I, I try to get jigs a little bit cheaper than that. So Darren says, everyone including Tyler, what's y'all's PB? And what'd you catch it on? Love to hear it. Riley says, my PB is 811. Caught it on a red and black see-through custom lipless crankbait. Bang! Man, I wanted to see that bait, Jack. Jack. That see-through red lipless crankbait that you got from Riley. was supposed to be mine, bro. Darren, my PB, um, Jack's is 6.4 on a craw that he found that someone left at the pond. That's hilarious. My PB is... Uh, I didn't I didn't end up weighing it so five and change and um then I caught it on a, a jackhammer chatterbait last uh last June. So Darren, I have a guy that works for the big brands and I can send in a request on what I want. They can make it LOL. What are you talking about, Riley? What kind of baits are you trying to make custom? Riley? I would love to know what you're looking into making. Jack, don't be sorry. It's not your fault, man. Uh, you know, it, it's really not your fault. I sent you a text, though. 
uh, let me know if you got that text. Uh, text me back. We should we should just exchange contact information. I'll send you a package and uh, with the stuff that Riley meant to send you, and I'll send you some stuff uh, from my collection too. Because this is fun, you know, sending packages around, kind of you know, paying it forward and sharing our our arsenals of baits, if you will, and um, and a couple of those lures that Riley sent to you were were kind of uh, were baits that she was trying to send to me for specific reasons, for sentimental value and uh, and other stuff. So anyway, I I would love if you've got that see through red lipless crankbait, I I want it or I at least want to see it. Uh, Riley was trying to send that to me, but Anyway, we'll uh, we can chat offline. If you if you did get my text though, just text me back and uh, and we can chat about it, exchange information, and uh, and I'll hook you up, dude, for sure. BJ, what you talking about that craw? I don't know what my PV is. Didn't have a scale. Need one. Yep. No, I'm not making any bass. There's a guy that works. He makes what? Beats? And like me, my partner, he asked him. Man, I wish I knew what you were talking about. But you literally get custom baits, Riley? That's wild. Like, are you just making custom colors of baits that Berkeley already makes? Or are, are you literally having them make new molds for you? Like, how does that work? Oh, Riley, you were talking about the lipless crankbait? All right, BJ. Guys, I posted a picture of this rig right here on Instagram yesterday. What do you all think about this? This is a Strike King Rage Craw in the Delta Red color. Rigged on a massive Z-Man Mag Shrooms weedless jig head. This is a 6 aught hook in here. Mushroom style jig head. And a weed guard on there. We've talked about this Mag Shrooms jig head before. It is made to rig on this absolutely gigantic giant trd this is a ned rig bait that <laughs> is ridiculously fat i mean this is like literally the size of uh, my first finger so just think about <laughs> a bait as fat as your finger and twice as long uh, so the mag shrooms head is awesome because it comes with that six aught medium wire hook. Um, it is no joke. And on most baits, it looks absolutely huge. You see the, the clearance on that? That is almost excessive, but it works on this four inch bait. So I'm excited to give this a try. I will still mostly swim this, but I will lift and drop this. You get a tremendous amount of action out of the Rage Craw specifically. So on the fall, it's going to have a ton of action. On the swim, it's going to have a ton of action. And on a kind of a lift and drop, it will also have a ton of action. So 
cool little uh, discovery I had there recently. And then BJ, these two you need to try, man. Riley says, no, they make new designs that now one has, and I try them out. So that bait you were going to get was one of a kind. That's what the guy said. Interesting. Okay. So you're kind of getting prototype baits. Darren says, I'm not sure if I should get a fish tank and fill it with water to see underwater action. I think I'm going to do that, dude. Um, and yes, it is a good idea. I used my kitchen sink, which is gigantic, and it works if I clean it out well and use a GoPro. Um, I can put it underwater and get some good footage there. Darren says, what's a good weight for Ned fishing? 1 16th is probably your best weight. But uh, 1 10th ounce by Z-Man is probably my most commonly used. Either 1 16th or 1 10th ounce. Um, other brands, that 3 16th would be like the 1 10th ounce. So you want something in between an 8th ounce and a 16th. An 8th ounce is getting heavy. Anything um, heavier than an 8th of an ounce and you're too heavy on the Ned. Um, you can go lighter than a 1 16th and be just fine. You know, Ned Cady himself, the guy who the Ned rig is named after, typically uses, I think, a 1 32nd um, on a size 4 hook. And what we're using most of the time is a size 1 hook, so much bigger than the hook that Ned uses. And we're using heavier weights. So, that would be my recommendation. <clears throat> there were some awesome looking hooks, says BJ. Faux show. Ron Holly, eight pound rainbow on a Berkeley power bait. You. That's what I'm trying to catch tomorrow with my girls. Bring it home for dinner. Yeah, you could use your bathtub too, says BJ. Yep. No, you don't have to laugh about it, especially if you're testing, you know, buoyancy. Like if you're testing to see if a, a jerk bait will suspend, uh, your bathtub is, is a great place to do it. So Riley says pretty much before they go on the market, but it's a two-week waiting period and they go in stores, so it could be in stores. I don't know. I'll have to ask the guy. Interesting. Speaking of waiting period, I, I got to say I'm still super excited to have these in my hand and super appreciative of Ray for grabbing these for me and trusting me to pay him back. Having three of these in my hands before the general public does um, is, is super exciting. So. That axis bait is one that I'm pumped about. I'm going to make a, a video specifically on it, you know, with a high quality video and stuff like that. So, all right, Darren. Yep. God bless you as well. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, good to see you in here. I will probably be on tomorrow night if you want to join, if you're going to be free, but. Um, otherwise, have a great rest of your weekend, and we will see you next time. Uh, next week, I believe uh, Wednesday and Thursday night are going to be the nights that uh, that I'm free to potentially stream. So we're only going to hang out a couple more minutes here, just because I never went and got that beer, and I do have to to pee a little bit. So I figured it'd be better for me to just hop off. But BJ. I do too, man. BJ, here's two rigs that you need to know about, okay? First, this is, you know, both of these rigs incorporate a little bit of old school and a little bit of new school. So, first rig, old school is just the Z-Man Fat Albert Grub, okay? 
just a very standard four inch grub. But what we're rigging it on is the owner flashy swimmer one aught. So this is a one aught lighter wire hook with a weighted, I believe this is a one eighth ounce weight on the shank of the, the belly hook. And then we've got a gold Colorado blade. So this is an awesome little bluegill imitator, up shallow, lightweight, weedless, if you tuck that in. And boom, baby. I mean, that's that's plenty big. You can't fit a three-aught hook in there. So um, this setup right here is is going to kill it. And I'm excited to try that one out. And then here's another one. Old school, new school. Old school rig, new school bait. So round ball jig head. This is the bigger one. I told you earlier, this comes in a two-aught and a three-aught hook. This is the three-aught hook, a little bit longer. But again, the 3 16 ounce weight. And I've got this on... A Strike King Rage Menace Grub, which is just a three and a half inch grub bait, grub body with some kicker tails. The Rage Menace Grub is super, super versatile. That Gamakatsu round ball jig has kind of a, a, a double lead keeper here so that you could potentially put a skirt on there if you wanted and then you'd still have a keeper but what i like to do here is literally just thread it straight up on there shove it over both keepers straighten it out and there you are and this little guy you can swim through the water you can hop it. You can you can work this however you want, just like you would an old school grub on a ball head. Uh, so three awesome little setups here this, this week that I just I rigged up playing around. Right, recommend that you check those out. I'm going to answer some questions and then uh, and then hop off here in a couple minutes. Also, love to take any recommendations you guys might have. Uh, if there's anything that you want to talk about tomorrow night specifically. Riley says, but just wait, Tyler. I have some stuff um, going through the mail that that you've been wanting to try. Spoiler alert. What you talking about, Riley? Yeah, don't tell me. Don't tell me. I don't want to know. Jack is back in the house. Yo, Jack, let me check to see if I got that right number. I don't think I have it, man. I... All right, I'm texting you right now. Top water, what? <laughs> what are you talking about, Riley? Top water, OMG? Don't tell me you got me a top water bait. I, I said I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I will wait till it 
or they or whatever it is arrives in the mail. Uh, I'm coming up with a wish list right now. Discount Tackle wants me to make some uh, some specific content for them on chatter baits and chatter bait trailers and Ned Rig baits and Ned Rig heads. So I'm going to be getting a little bit of excess um, with those baits and uh, I'm going to give some of them away. So want to hook you guys up with that. Um, yes, BJ? And yeah, Riley, we could talk about top water tomorrow. That would not be a bad idea for sure. I mean, it, it's definitely a topic that we could talk about for a couple of hours. That's for dang sure. Uh, we could rifle through a few dozen or a hundred baits, no problem. Uh, just just going through the different categories of top water baits. So that might be a good um, good thing to cover, but I will give it some thought. BJ says, my phone's going crazy. Well, no worries. Guys, I think I'm going to hop off. But um, Or beaver baits, says Riley. Beaver baits uh, could be a good one, but might be a, a little bit short-lived just because I, I think I've only got five or eight different beaver-style baits. And, um, and there's such subtle differences between them that the conversation might not last very long. So uh, I like top water better as of right now, but I'll think about it. Could talk swim baits. There's a little bit more to talk about, more baits to show. So um, I'll think about it, but you guys have a great rest of your night. It's been awesome hanging out with you. Appreciate your support. As always, uh, really love the community in here, uh, the vibes in general. Uh, everybody. Is happy go lucky, happy to be here, and um, and so supportive of each other. So thank you guys for being who you are and uh, for supporting me and the channel and everybody else who supports the channel. So I love it. Um, love to keep it going. Um, keep sending around more packages to each other. Share the wealth. So I will see you guys tomorrow. BJ says. Glad to talk to everyone. Thanks for everything um, from all of you. Can't wait till tomorrow. Absolutely, guys. Have a great rest of your night. Sleep well. Enjoy your day tomorrow. Hopefully, you can go fishing. I'm going to take my daughter's fishing, try to catch a, a trout that maybe we can bring home. Do a little catch and cook or something like that. So, see you next time, guys. Cheers. <laughs>